Happy Wednesday, y'all. It's day 24 of Walk With Winston. And it is, this is the anniversary of the first Wednesday we did this together. Um, uh, our first Walk With Winston was four weeks ago on a Wednesday from Reston, Virginia. And who knew we would be now at, at uh, video 24. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all the comments and feedback that you're giving. Even found out yesterday that some of you enjoy your morning walk with me. So we're doing this together. I know we were on the transformation together, but I didn't know that we'd be walking in the morning together. So <laughs> that is exciting and fun. And, and, and hey, also one other thing before we get started today. I've started a new Facebook page. Uh, it link here in the in the show notes today tell you how to get to that Facebook page. Haven't quite figured out how to link it directly in my comments, so I'm using a Bitly link. That's going to bring you over to a, a Facebook page called WinstonFaircloth.com. It says I'm a consulting agency. Oh, this is just a place where I'm putting all these videos in one convenient location, and also. Right now, I'm bombarding my friends who are in both of those groups with double videos in the feed, and I don't intend to do that forever. So starting next week, the videos are all going to be in on that, on that uh, public Facebook page, and that way it's super shareable, easy to get to, and you won't get uh, the rest of the stuff that's going on. So... It's just going to be a, a good placeholder for all these Walk With Winston videos. So hop on over there, join the already 60-some people who have signed up for that, that video, this video in their feed. So exciting to have 60 folks already in just a day or so that uh, this page has been live. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so yes, so today... Yeah, I want to get to this. I want to bring more of my life story into these videos over the next several ones to give you hope and inspiration that God can take all of our life experiences and and to um, put them to good use. You know, nothing is wasted in God's economy, God's world. And so yesterday I talked about how when I was called to be a minister at age 15 by my uh, the minister at our church, how I felt so ill-equipped to do that work, and I just didn't accept that call. Um, so today I want to talk about some other early life experiences that have really proven out later to be the perfect equipping uh, to the person that uh, to later stages in my life so let's start with yesterday I talked about high school I'm gonna go back a little further to uh, when I was very young probably in uh, first or second grade so I mentioned that we lived on a rural street and there was Let's see, one, two, three, four houses, five houses on our little road, one lane road. We lived on a very busy, our house faced a very busy through road between Norfolk and the Outer Banks. But our little side street that I lived on was just five houses and uh, six houses. And so out of those houses, only two of those houses had kids our age. So it was not a lot of excitement during summer break from school. I remember being so eager to learn and to, and to grow. And so when mom bought us um, the summer edition of the weekly reader to be delivered to our house during the summer and other um, magazines of that era that would come during the summer to keep kids engaged, I just was a voracious reader of that. But more than being a reader and someone who was a lifelong learner, I was, I had this entrepreneurial streak and uh, I loved taking resources, filling needs 
and helping people. And so, and helping myself at the same time. Nothing wrong with that. So, my sister, she'll shoot me for sharing this. But, uh, <clears throat> that's the fun thing about being an older brother, a sister three years younger. It was a, a great dynamic um, between the two of us and still is today. Anyway, so I saw this need. My dad worked for Coca-Cola, and so he would be able to bring home a case, I think a case a week, he could bring a case a week home of irregulars. And these were Coca-Cola bottles that were not filled precisely to the level that you would put on retail shelves. And so he was able to buy these, a case of those Coca-Cola bottles for like, I believe a dollar. And there was 24 in the case. And he had a little, he took, he had a Coca-Cola machine that he refurbished and would keep them cold. It was a, it was a barrel. It was a big barrel. You could put them in and, and then get, it would position as you crank the handle, would position one bottle available for it every time you put in money. So I don't know how I became the person responsible for this Coca-Cola machine, but I ended up filling it with those bottles and selling those drinks to the neighborhood kids for a dime a piece, which was kind of the going rate. That was the retail rate at the time for those little bottles. And so I would earn $2.40 I don't know. I don't remember if Dad charged me, <laughs> charged me for that, or if he let me keep all the profits. Anyway, I was pretty enterprising that way. And then I saw there was much to do from an enrichment standpoint in our little neighborhood. So I ended up taking all of the children's books that we had. I remember my my books and my sister's books. And I'm not sure if I was able to convince the neighborhood kids to do this or not. I believe I did. I said, well, let's, let's put together a library so that we can exchange books back and forth and really have books to read with each other. So I bought a stamp. Back then they had these little rubber stamps that you could buy and you could put your own letters in there and, and make your own personalized stamp. So I purchased one of those. I called our library Peace Library. You can tell this was the late 60s. And, and I charged the neighborhood kids a nickel to check out a book. Well, my sister protested that this was very unfair because now she's having to pay a nickel to get her own books back to, to do that. But being the entrepreneur I was, I did not listen to her and ended up making money from Peace Library. Well, then the other thing that I did was I was now old enough to walk down to the corner store, which was about a quarter mile away, down the very busy road. And I was old enough to do that, and so I took those proceeds, both from the Coca-Colas and from the Peace Library, and I went down to the store to buy what was then known as penny candy. And so each piece was a penny. And I would go to the store, buy bags of that, bring it back to Peace Library and charge a nickel for each penny candy. <laughs> I look back on that now as a very funny story, but it was preparation for what would come later in my life. What was the preparation? I have not been in retail. I've not been a librarian. Like My sister is a librarian today. But uh, So what was this preparing me for? Well, what it uncovered was a gift of mine that only later in life have I discovered that I have. And it's the ability to see a gap in the marketplace, to connect a variety of desperate ideas, desperate, desperate, uh, desperate ideas, and to present something to the marketplace that fills a, a genuine need. It's, um, it's an equipping, and it's a very natural thing for me to do. Um, later in life, I ended up doing the same thing. I ended up helping co-found a social enterprise, a nonprofit that 
combined technology resources and served other nonprofits with commercial grade technology services, cloud based services, well before that was a thing, and served United Ways very, very well. And that came out of meeting a need that I had myself. Um, so these, these are two examples. Well, this is an, an early childhood example of how things that you do when you're young begin to equip you for things later in life, particularly vocational things or maybe even passions that you didn't know that you had. Um, the other story I wanted to tell you is that sometimes these experiences really prepare you for exponential growth. And so one other story this morning I'll share from um, my formative years. So I was in high school and I ended up being uh, elected to the student body office. I, you know, people kind of gravitated to me in high school. I guess maybe it was because I had that gentle nature uh, that was so unexpected for a person of my size. And so I, I was elected to high school office, and as a result of that, I got to experience some, some first, some very big growing moments in my life. One was that I got my very first plane ride as a result of that, uh, that experience. I flew from Norfolk to Washington, D.C., which is basically a puddle jump, 30-minute flight, but I'll never forget how I got to be on a plane for the very first time as a result of that. But the summer before the summer before that year that we were taking office, our, our school sponsor invited us, he and his wife invited us over for dinner at his house. And I was a very, very shy person in high school. Uh, very, very um, reserved. I just didn't have a lot of confidence. And so I remember uh, an example of how shy I was was that at that sponsor's house, it's friends of mine, my sponsor, you know, our sponsor, and we're having a very casual dinner, maybe six or seven of us around a dinner table. And I was too shy to ask them to pass the salad dressing. I just ate it plain. That sticks in my mind as an example of where I came from in terms of that shyness. Fast forward and I mentioned yesterday that a big part of my college education was funded by the fact that I was a in the residence hall program where I was responsible for first a hallway of undergrads and eventually two times in a row an entire dormitory of undergrad students. How do you go from shy teenager to um, a person who is leading and caring for, especially my senior year, caring for 300 plus freshman women. How do you make that leap? Well, God equips us with experiences that prepares us for a future call. And that future call of helping me learn to be a leader, and in the case of being a head resident, managing a small team of other RAs equipped me perfectly for my next role in life, which was um, starting my United Way career. And within 18 months, or within 24 months of starting my United Way career, I was promoted to the first vice, to the, to the youngest vice president of a United Way for a major market, top 100 market in the country. Um, how did that happen? These little steps of faith, these little stretches and calls that called me out of my comfort zone into something bigger. I'll tell you more about that story tomorrow, but today I encourage you to, to draw some inspiration from your early days, early memories of childhood. Were there things that you were naturally gifted at, that you enjoyed, and it made you so happy to do? Draw upon that 
in seeking out your transformation. Tap into that inner creativity from your early days. I think you'll be amazed as to what you can do in life. With that, you guys have a great Thursday. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow from a different venue. Bye.